Our next case is State of Ohio versus J. Sheridan Andrews. State has waived argument. Attorney Buchanan is present on behalf of Mr. Andrews. You'll have 15 minutes to present your argument. And uh, we've read the briefs and are ready to proceed when you are, Attorney Buchanan. Thank you, Your Honors. May it please the court, I have the privilege to uh, represent J. Andrews. This is going to be his third time visiting the Ninth District Court of Appeals. Uh, that is important to note for the factual and procedural history. He did have a jury trial. He was acquitted of the most serious charge. Uh, the trial court then uh, found him guilty of the repeat violent offender specification, or uh, the colloquial is the RBO spec. Uh, did this, the defendant challenge that, the constitutionality of the repeat violent offender in the trial court? Did not, const did not challenge it at the, at the trial court level, and Jay did not uh, challenge it at, the, at his direct appeal from his conviction. He did challenge it on his post-conviction relief, which this court subsequently denied. And the reason this is important is because, pro se, in 2016, Jay moved the trial court to have his void, pro se, moved to void an illegal sentence. And he filed this motion with the trial court. And this was based upon State v. Williams and the merger doctrine, in, in essence. So, because count one's a count two, in his case, should have merged. So, and as this court knows, the trial court retains jurisdiction to correct the void sentence. So the trial court agrees with Jay and says, this is a void sentence. And that's very important to this court because in essence, the trial court reset the button. And when the trial court agreed that Jay had a void sentence, all bets are off, which means the direct appeal, uh, in, in essence, the trial court is resentencing Jay into a de novo resentencing, which means that this appeal comes from that, which entitles Jay to, again, raise those issues. So it is Jay's perspective that because the trial court agreed with him and said, yes, this is a void sentence, we're going to, uh, the government had the opportunity to elect which count they wanted to proceed. Both counts were felonious assault with the RBO specification. So he did face the same amount of time for both counts. So what the uh, court trial court did was sentenced him to seven years mandatory time for the repeat violent offender specification, and then the maximum of eight years for the second degree uh, offense of felonious assault for a total of 15 years. It is interesting to note that in Jay's direct appeal from his conviction, this court, in its resuscitation of the facts, uh, and that was Court of Appeals 2, uh, I'll make sure the 25114, when this court did the recitation of facts, this court agreed that the trial court made the finding of the RBO specification in direct uh, conflict with State v. Foster when the Supreme Court of the State of Ohio said judicial fact-finding is unconstitutional. So this court, in, its, in the direct appeal from Jay originally, at least in its resuscitation of facts, agreed, based upon the original journal entry, that the trial court did make those findings which the trial court was not permitted to do. So Jay's position is that he was sentenced voidly originally in 2009, and then when we went back to reset in 2016, the trial court again found that Jay was guilty of the repeat violent offender specification. What was the nature of your client's repeat violent offender specification? It is my understanding that the trial court made a finding on the transcript that Jay had a previous record. So it was based on a previous conviction? Correct. Now the trial court made that finding through the transcript. The trial court did not place that in its original sentencing entry after the jury trial nor did the trial court place it in the new sentencing entry for which Jay appeals from. And this court knows that if it's not in the journal sentencing of entry, you can't use it. Is there a difference between the court engaging in that type of fact-finding versus the type of fact-finding that would be involved with finding um, physical harm or serious physical harm? I think that I'm quoting State versus Hunter. In that right. Regard. Yes, and this court in Hunter, in, in bringing that up, the prior record, and that case stands for the preposition that the prior record has to be part of the record. And for the appellate court to see that record, it has to be in the journal entry. So Jay's position would be yes, it, it would be different in this case because Hunter, which the Ohio Supreme Court and the government does cite, has not been reviewed by the Ohio Supreme Court. But that Jay's position is that the his previous conviction either admitted to an exhibit, he either stipulated to a pre his previous conviction, or he waived the fact that he did have a previous conviction, and then that became part of the record. In this case, that does not seem to have happened. And because that did not have it happen, Hunter, while it is binding upon this court and applies, is not applicable. So it at least indicates that record. 
Um, and this court in State v. Banks, 2011, Ohio, 1039, does seem to indicate that once a, a sentence is void and it's resentencing, it's as if the sentencing had never occurred. And so that allows Jay what would become his third trip to the Ninth District Court of Appeals. Uh, because I would agree that uh, with the government's preposition that normally this claim would be barred by res judicata because this is a collateral attack. Uh, however, the collateral, this is, if you don't believe the government's position, this, then this is a collateral attack and may not be permitted. However, because the trial court agreed with Jay and said, yes, your sentence is void, and we're going to engage in the merger doctrine, and the government elected on count, I believe, one to sentence Jay, that made him have a de novo sentencing hearing at the trial court, which then allows all the sentencing issues that may have occurred at the trial court to occur here in this uh, direct appeal of that. And I would indicate that this is not plain error as far as the sentencing is concerned because the trial court never has the authority to sentence someone to a void sentence. And so Jay's preposition is that the trial court, again, engaged in that judicial fact-finding, found him guilty of the RBO specification. So Jay's, what would Jay really would like, and his institutional record, I believe, is part of the, the resentencing, was for this court to use its authority in Article 4, Section 3B2 of the Ohio Constitution and say the RBO spec is out. It's it, it, because of what the court did, because of the record placed before this court, it has no choice but to eliminate the RBO specification and then permit it either to be remanded or for the government to elect which sentence to which count to sentence Jay on, either count one or count two. But that would be the equivalent because they were both felonious assaults of the second degree and you would face a maximum of eight years. And just and in this case, the trial court did give him the maximum penalty of eight years in addition to the seven. So the this court has two options. One, just to eliminate the repeat violence offender specification and then make this sentence eight years based upon what the trial court has done or remand it and say the trial court has to resentence according to the law and say, however, because of the judicial fact finding, we can't do the, re the RBO specification because the record does not support it. And with that, does the panel have any other questions? Nor do I, so thank you for your honor. Thank you, Your Honors. The uh, court will take the matter under advisement and wish you a decision. Mail you a clerk, of course, will mail you a copy. The day is released, and you can also check the Supreme Court of Ohio's website, which posts our opinions. Thank you. Thank you.